Hey everyone, this is Neha and this session is all about Selenium tutorial. In this session, I will talk about one of the most widely used automation testing tools, Selenium. Well, let's take a look at the topics to be covered in this session. First, I will introduce you to automation testing and its process. Next, I will talk about Selenium, why it is preferred and what are the advantages of using this tool. Then I will provide you with a broad overview of Selenium architecture and its components. Moving forward, I am going to show you how to install Selenium and execute your very first test case. Then we will discuss more into the automation part wherein you will learn what are locators, how to find web elements and how to perform actions on it etc. And finally, you will learn what are weights in Selenium and its various types. I hope you found agenda interesting. Now, without wasting any further time, let's get straight into the module. First, let's understand what is automation testing. As stated, it is a method or an approach in software testing that uses special software tools to control the execution of tests. And it also compares the actual test results with expected results. And in this case, it requires very less human intervention. And automation testing eases the process of testing with its advanced features. Wait, if you remember the manual approach of testing where the tester looks after each and every test case and analyzes the results manually, just imagine the effort required. Therefore, in order to reduce this manual effort, an automated testing approach was introduced. Now, let's take a look at the automation testing process. So here is the life cycle of automation testing and in general, every test case undergoes various stages as shown in the slide. First, determine the scope of automation. In this step, it aims to identify the feasibility of automation. Every aspect should be considered while analyzing this feasibility. It is also essential to perform a feasibility analysis on the manual test case pack that allows automation engineers to design the test scripts. So once you determine the scope of automation, the very next step is to choose the right automation testing tool. So as the features are advanced, automation testing is highly tool dependent. And that's why finding the right automation testing tool is a critical phase for an automation testing life cycle. When you're looking for an automation tool, you need to keep in mind about the budget, the technologies being used in the project, and your team's familiarity with the tool, your flexibility, and many more. Choose a tool that provides you with a support team who can take care of its queries and issues. So next, you have to introduce the automated test approach. So in this step, you need to bring the essence of automated testing approach, its methodology, and how the test cases should be automated. And the next phase is all about the test planning, design, and development. This phase defines how to approach and accomplish the goal of test automation. Selecting a test automation framework is the first and foremost thing that is supposed to be done. During the test planning phase, the testing team decides the test procedure creation standards and guidelines, hardware, software and network to support the test environment, a preliminary test schedule, test data requirements, defect tracking procedure, and associated tracking tool and a procedure to control test configuration and staging environment. The team of test engineers develops a test architecture to describe the test program structure and the way test procedures are managed after the test program model is designed. And then comes the test architecture where the structure of the entire program is described along with the management of a test procedure. So all these steps happen in test planning, design and development. And after this, the very next step is about the test execution and management. In this phase, the test engineers deal with executing the multiple test cases and understanding its performance and make sure that the test cases are reliable. And the last phase is all about the reviewing and evaluating the executed test cases. In this case, 
If there are any errors in the test cases, it will be monitored and corrected and then the final sign off will be given to the test. This is all about the automation testing process and the life cycle. Now, let's look at the automation testing tools that are widely used for various purposes. So there are many tools, but here I have listed few of them. So you have Selenium, you have Catalan Studio, you have Test Complete, IBM Rational, SOAP UI, HP Unified Functional Testing, Tricentis and Ranuret. So there are multiple other tools as well, but these are some of the widely used tools for cross browser testing, for parallel execution, for multi-browser testing, for web application and website testing, etc. So let's see what's next. As Selenium is widely used and a prominent tool, let's now understand the fundamentals of this tool. First, let's look at what is Selenium. Selenium is an open source portable framework which is used to automate the testing of web application. Remember, it is only used for testing of web applications or websites. It does not support mobile app testing. Next. It is highly flexible when it comes to testing of functional and regression test cases. It supports cross-browser testing where the test cases are run across various platforms simultaneously. And this tool also helps in creating robust browser-based regression source and then performs the test. So why do you need Selenium? It supports multiple browsers. You can execute the test case in any of these browsers. And also the test scripts can be written in different programming languages like Java, Python, C Sharp, etc. And it can be run across multiple operating systems like Mac, iOS, Android, Windows, etc. And that's what makes this tool the most widely used one because it supports all the different types of browsers. It supports various programming languages and the operating system platforms as well. So here are some of the advantages of Selenium. Provides great support for language and framework. And as already seen before, it also provides multi browser support and it's very easy to implement. And the parallel test execution is one of the main feature that Selenium supports and that can be done with much speed. And this entire tool requires very less hardware usage and constant updates. So these are some of the various advantages of Selenium. Now, let's understand what is Selenium architecture and its various components. So before talking about the Selenium architecture, let me tell you what is a web driver API. So it is an API that helps in communicating between the languages and the browsers. Each and every browser has a different logic of performing the actions on the browser. So here is the architecture in which you have the client library. You have the web drivers, browser specific implementation. You have a web client and the browser. So in case of the client libraries, that is the test scripts using web driver client libraries, it supports multiple libraries such as Java, Ruby, Python, etc. And Selenium developers have developed language bindings to allow the Selenium to support multiple languages. So once you write the script or your test script using these libraries, there's something called as JSON by a protocol over HTTP client. JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. It is used to transfer the data between a server and the client on the web. So JSON via protocol is a REST API that transfers the information between the HTTP server. And each browser driver, like your Firefox driver, your IE driver, or your Chrome driver, has its own HTTP server. And then each browser contains a separate browser driver. So you can see in the figure, Firefox contains a Firefox browser, IE driver comprises of IE browser and Chrome driver comprises of a Chrome browser. Simple, so each browser contains a separate, I repeat, so each browser contains a separate browser driver. Browser drivers communicate with the respective browser without revealing the internal logic of the browser's functionality. When a browser driver has received any command, 
then that command will be executed on the respective browser and the response will go back in the form of an HTTP response to the web client. So this is all about the internal logic that happens when you write and execute your test case. Simple. So now let's see what are components of Selenium. So it comprises of Selenium IDE, RC, WebDriver and Grid. So this is nothing but the Selenium suite of tools. Let's understand all these in detail. Talking about Selenium IDE, it is a Firefox plugin and one of the most simplest frameworks in the Selenium suite, which also allows us to record and play back the test scripts. And if you wish to create the scripts using Selenium IDE, you need to use the Selenium RC that is a remote controller or you also need to use a web driver to write more advanced and robust test cases. With Selenium IDE alone, you won't be able to write the test scripts in a more advanced way as you have the newer versions of Selenium that mainly deals with Selenium web driver. Next, you have Selenium RC. This is also known as a Selenium 1. It's also called as a remote controller, Selenium remote controller. And this was the main project for a long time before the Selenium web driver merge brought up the Selenium 2. And Selenium RC relies on JavaScript for automation. And again, this supports multiple programming languages and every browser out there. But now it is officially deprecated, which means you won't be able to use this particular tool. And then comes the Selenium web driver, which is a browser automation framework that accepts command and sends them to the browser. So whatever I have explained you about the Selenium architecture, this is all about the Selenium web driver alone. And this is implemented through a browser specific driver and communicates with the browser and controls it. Again, it supports various programming languages. It supports various browsers and operating systems. Whatever the programming languages, browsers and operating systems are present, it supports everything over there. And then comes the Selenium Grid, which is a tool that is used together with Selenium RC. It is used to execute the tests on different machines against different browsers in parallel, which implies it allows running of multiple tests at the same time against different machines, which are running on different browsers and operating systems. So this was all about the Selenium components. Now let's see how to install Selenium and execute a very first test case. So these are the basic installations that is required. So you need Java 1.8 and above or Python. So if you're using Java, you can go with Eclipse for JEE developer. Or if you're using Python, you can use PyCharm. So in this session, I am working out through Java and Eclipse. And the latest version of Selenium is Selenium 3.0. And you have to install the browser drivers because you need to communicate with browser. So I'll explain all these installations. So this is the first test case. First, you need to create a project in Eclipse, then create a class file, then configure build path and add the Selenium jars, then write the first test case and add the path of browser driver save the file and run the program. Now let's go step by step and see how to install all these and then we'll again see how to run the first test case. Simple. So I'm in google.com. I'll just search Selenium and I'll hit the first link. So you can see there's a Selenium web driver, IDE, Selenium grid and many more. Just hit the downloads page. So when you are on the downloads page, you can see the uh, version of Selenium, the latest stable version and the latest Selenium Alpha version as well. You can download this and this as well if you want. So this is nothing but the server and this is the actual Selenium. And here are the uh, libraries for Java. If you are using Python, you can go with Python as I am using Java. I will be downloading this version of Java. Not this, only this version. As I have already downloaded, you can see here I have the alpha version of Selenium. So when you download the Selenium from this particular link, this particular link, you will get a jar file. You need to extract the jar file. So when you extract the jar file, it comprises of 
all these things. So there's a client combined libraries as well. And when you go into the libraries, so these are the Selenium jar files. And next, after downloading this, you can uh, download the Java version 1.8. And for browser drivers, I will show you how to do that. Just click on Google Chrome Web Driver. So this is the link for downloading. So based on the Chrome version, you can use the drivers. So if you have a Chrome version 83, you can click on this and you can download that. And if you have 81, you can. As I have 81, I'll be using this particular link. So just hit on this link and you will get the uh, driver. So one thing, unless and until you have the matching version of your driver, your test will not execute. And you can see here, So this is a Chrome driver version. So once you download that, you will get a file and it will be like this. Simple, this is the executable file. So depending on your Chrome version, you can download this. And next we have, so you know about the Java, how to install Eclipse. You can just download for JW developers that you will be using for advanced Java. And this is all about how to download Selenium and the browser drivers. So if you want to go with the Firefox driver, you can download Gecko driver. So let me show you. Gecko driver download. Here is the one. So again, it depends on your particular version you can download. So recently we have version 26. If you are having a Mozilla Firefox version 26, then just select based on your Windows operating system bit as well. If you have 32 bit, you can download with this. If you have 64 bit, you can go with this. So again, that also I have Gecko driver. Same way like Chrome driver, even this is similar. So once you have all these, the very next step is about checking how to run the first test case. So as I have mentioned, you need to first create a project, create a class file, Configure build path and add Selenium jars. Write the first test case, add the path to browser driver, save the file and run the program. Simple. Let's see that now. I'll go to file, new, Java project. I'll enter the project name as Selenium test. Next. So the default output folder will be in bin. Click on finish. So you have created a project. Now if you want to create a package, you can create a package. If you are executing multiple test cases and all that. Else, I'll go to the source folder, new and I'll create a class. So I want my class to be test example finish. Okay, but now the challenge here is that I have to configure the build path. So go to build path, click on configure. You can see there's just GRE system library and there's no any jar files, which means your Selenium is not configured. So go to Selenium, add all these three first that you have downloaded. Then again, click on add external jars. Go to library, add all these. Simple apply and close. Now your Selenium is being configured. I have already created a few. So I have the first test case. I'll click on Selenium example and I'll show you my build path. Just to make sure it's the same. So you can see here I have all the libraries that I've showed you just now and the Java system library. Apply and close. So here what I'm doing is I'm creating a class called first test case. That's the first thing. Next, 
I will write my main method. Same that we write in a uh, normal Java file like this. And I'll just mention it throws an interrupted exception in case if anything is thrown, it will get handled. Okay. And now the very first step is about setting the system properties. So I will be using Chrome browser throughout and hence I'm making use of Chrome driver. So this is how I need to write my driver name that is webdriver.chrome.driver and the path. So as you all know, I have my Chrome driver here, which is the Selenium Chrome driver 32 and this is an executable file. So whatever the name it is, Chrome driver all in small case, I will write the same way and this is the path to the driver. And now I have to create the object of a Chrome driver. So web driver driver is equal to new Chrome driver will create the object of the driver. And now when I execute the test case, it will open the very small window, like the browser will be open in a small window. So I want to maximize it, hence I will use the object of a driver that is driver.manage.window. I mean the window of the browser should be maximized. This is how I need to write. Now I want to perform a test case on the google.com website. So I will use driver.get which implies it will help me to navigate through this link that which implies it will open the Chrome browser and then it will navigate through google.com. So now I want to find the element by name and send keys as testing. Before this I will show you how to do that. So you are in the google.com page just right click inspect so manually if you want to search something what you will do you will come here and you will search. So that only if I want to do in an automated way I will have to come here click on inspect and then key uh, attribute called name whose value is two. So I will explain you what are locators and what are the various types of locators like id name and what are the attributes and what are its values. For now I am just clicking on right click inspect and here is the value. So you can see here when I click on this, so you can see here when I click on this, this particular box is getting highlighted which means it is getting located, right? So I'll just copy the value of the attribute. So again I'll go back to my example. So here I'm using an attribute that is the locator name, find element using the value that is Q send keys which will help me to send a particular value called testing. So again, if I want manually, I'll write here testing and I'll hit the enter. Right? So it's navigating me to this page. So that only I want to do in an automated way using Selenium. The task is not just ended over here. I want to hit on the enter button as well. So you can see there's a button called Google search, right? Again, I'll click on inspect and you can see it has a value called btnk again for a name attribute. So what I will do, I'll copy and paste the same value even in my code, find element by name and I want to click on this. Here it was a text box, so I'm using send keys. So here it is a button, hence I have to click on the button because I cannot use send keys over there. So hence I'm using click. Okay, and then just end the example, save the program and run the first test case. Let's see what happens. So you can see I have a Chrome driver version of 80. It's protecting the ports. And now it will launch the browser instance. Yes, as I told, it will be a small window. Hence, I have used maximize to maximize it. And now you can see it got maximized. It located, it used testing. And it hit the enter button, right? So one thing, 
Here, Chrome is being controlled by automated test software. Whereas, in this case, no, it did not. Which means it created a browser instance. Browser driver helped to create a new browser. Located the URL google.com. Then it located the text box. Entered the value testing and hit on the Google search button. So all these things that was done by a user manually is done in an automated way. This thing, if all your tasks are being done in this way automatically, just imagine your effort will be very less and there's very less human intervention. So that's why Selenium is being used. So this is about your first test case. So yes, you created a project, you configured build path, you wrote the test case, add the path to browser driver and run the program. This is all about how to execute your very first test. Simple. So what is a web element? Anything that is present on the web page is a web element such as text, button, etc. It represents an HTML element and Selenium web driver encapsulates a simple form of element as a web element. So now one more thing. As you just now saw about the various locators and everything, here I have a simple example of Amazon website which has an ID attribute and whose value is search text box and the name has a value called field keywords. So that's what I have just demonstrated in this particular slide. So next, let's understand what are locators in Selenium. So locators are defined as an address that identifies a web element uniquely within the web page. It is a command that tells the Selenium IDE which GUI elements like text box, button, checkboxes it has to operate on. Which means it will just notify which element has to be operated. Finding correct GUI elements is a prerequisite for creating an automation script. But accurate identification of GUI elements is much more difficult than it sounds. Sometimes, you might even end up working with incorrect GUI elements. Hence, using the right locator ensures that the tests are faster, more reliable or has lower maintenance over releases. So these are the various locators that you have ID, name, link text, CSS and XPath. As you already seen how to use a name locator in your first test case. Now let me explain each of them in detail. So ID are one of the most popular way to identify web elements. IDs are considered as the safest and fastest locator option and should always be the first choice even when there are multiple choices. Next is name. This is also an effective way to locate an element within the name attribute. With this strategy, the first element with the name value will be returned. If no element has a matching name attribute, then no such element exception will be raised. And then you have a link text. You can identify the hyperlinks on the web page using link text. It can be determined with the help of an anchor tag. In order to create a hyperlink on the web page, you can use anchor tags followed by a link text. I will demonstrate all these locators for you. And then comes the CSS selector, which is used to provide the style rules for the web page. And you can also use it for identifying one or more elements in the web page. And CSS is the best possible way to locate complex elements in the web page. And at last, we have XPath. It is a language to query XML documents. It is an important strategy to locate elements in Selenium. It also consists of a path expression along with some conditions. Now let's demonstrate all these locators and understand how it works. So first, let's understand how it works. I will just navigate to Amazon.com. Now say I want to locate this search box. So what I'll do again, I'll give inspect. And you can see it has an ID locator. So till now I showed it as an attribute or something, but ID name, class name, link text, 
Expert in CSS, all these are locators which is used to find a web element and perform some actions on it. So you have an IIT locator whose value is two tab search text box. So first is the ID locator. I'll write diver dot find element by ID. I'll give it as two tab search text box. The send key is mobile phone because I want to find the element and send values called mobile phones. Simple. And now I also want to search this, right? But as I don't want to use this for now, I just want to demonstrate. I agree. So I just want to demonstrate how the ID works. I'll execute this test case. Save. Yes. So again, it will launch the Chrome browser. It will navigate to Amazon.com and it gave the search. If I had used this and located this, it would have given the search for this as well. So next is no need to worry about the timeout because I haven't given driver dot quit or driver dot close. So next day I want to find with the help of the name. What was the name value for this? The name value for this particular search box was field keywords. I'll just copy the value. I'll just go back and I'll just paste in place of ID. I'm finding it with the help of a name. And suppose say I will give your driver dot close. This will close the browser instance. In case if I use driver dot quit, it will quit the web driver instance, which means the entire program will get shut down. So basically, it's about shutting down only one particular instance and shutting down the entire system. Simple. That way, driver dot close and driver dot quit are being used. So again, I'll run this. Let's see what happens now. I'm not touching my laptop. I'm not doing anything on the screen. Everything is happening by itself. So it's telling it's timed out. So what I have to do, give a particular timeout. So I will get driver dot manage dot Timeouts. Just a second. Timeouts. Uh, so, because it is showing it's timed out, I have to do something. So, I will use driver dot manage dot timeouts dot timeouts dot implicitly wait. 30 seconds at least or because it's a small time just 10 seconds at least time unit will be seconds okay I'll just give it here as time unit As seconds okay so with this it will never give the message called timed out receiving message let's close and again execute it and now you can see what happened and now you I repeat so now you can see what happens so it's navigating through amazon.com And it again timed out. So I will do one thing. I will stop the close instance. And I will give thread dot sleep for it to wait for a certain time. Thread dot sleep of 2000, which is for two, two seconds. And let's execute again. So now you can see it entered mobile phones 
and it's waiting because I haven't used driver dot close. Because I have used driver dot close, it was getting closed very quick. Because I have used the timeout now, it is not getting because I am asking it to wait for a particular amount of time, no matter what, even if it has find, found the element or not. Now I'll do one more thing. I'll again give driver dot close, which implies after two seconds it has to close. Or I'll give five seconds. Which means after five seconds it has to close. Let's see that now. So it is waiting for five seconds. After five seconds, it will get closed. See? Correct? So that's how the locators will work. And now I'll demonstrate about the link text on the same website. It's a link text, so I need not use dot send keys because I have to click on the particular link. I cannot send any uh, values to that. So uh, there's something called as today's deals. Let's inspect on this particular link. And you can see there's a text here which is enclosed between the anchor tag. Yes, anchor tag starts with A, F, Z, and ends here. So always remember a link text is always present within the anchor tag. And it's just a plain text like this. Just copy the value, use the link text locator, and paste the value over here. Let's see what happens now. Just all four lines are same. Just this will change. So you can see it hits on today's deals, which implies it's showing the uh, today's deals, what are the promotions, etc. etc. And again it closed because I have used driver.close. So now I want to use CSS selector. So I'll show you how to find the CSS selector. So you know you have ID value, which is two tab search text box. Just copy the ID value. Come here. Before the value of ID, so before the value of ID, just add hash. And again, I'm using the uh, I'll give some search like guitar. So whenever you're using a CSS selector, make use of hashtag before any value that you're giving. So this is one simple thing that I'm showing. That so I am using ID value and okay. So again, I'll save it. I'll execute and let's see what happens now. Yes, it gave a search. Right? It did work. So this is how you can use CSS selector. And the last one is the export. As you know, it's a expression or a statement. It cannot be written with just one thing. But yeah, I'll show you how it works. So here, I'll again inspect on the same thing. And I'll click on Control F. So before I proceed with Demonstrating what is X path, I will tell you what are the two types of X path. One is the absolute X path, and the other one is relative X path. So, in case of absolute X path, it starts from the start of the DOM structure, which means it starts with the doc type HTML, then it navigates through head, which means you have to write like HTML of one. Yes, the class, and then you have to give body class body of one if it is a immediate body tag you have to give body of one then you have a div div of 
to it will again navigate to the second div because it was the first div and if you want to find this particular element you have to navigate from the root structure of the html but in case of relative xpath you can locate from anywhere in the document but it should start with double forward slash in case of absolute xpath it starts with single slash in case of relative xpath it starts with double forward slash which implies anywhere in the document which has a input tag okay it should so if this particular element is having a input tag or when you give on the search all that you know is that it starts with the input so go anywhere in the document which has the input tag give to square braces and then right here as which has an id attribute go anywhere in the document which has an input tag and an id attribute whose value is two tab search text box that is the id value of this even here also with this expression the element got located then just copy this x path from here which is very simple i hope you understand how to locate this come here and just paste it again i want to just send the values for the same it will work if you want to look at any other element just click on that element first and check if it has a id attribute or a name attribute or a class name anything so you can see it executed so if you want to find any element using xpath or any complex elements just locate the element first okay so suppose say you want to locate the search so make sure you locate the element first and then check if it has a input tag and it also has a class whose value is nav hyphen input you can locate it using this and also you can see the value of xpath is 1 and so on i hope you understood what is xpath and how to locate it using relative xpath because absolute xpath is very complicated and relative is very easy though there are dynamic elements every time when a element is dynamic it changes so you can locate it using the other attributes in such cases so when there are static elements you can easily locate with the help of uh, xpath so this was all about the various locators and how you can use each one of them and now let's jump into the next part of the session and understand what are weights in selenium weights help the user to troubleshoot issues while redirecting to different web pages this is achieved by refreshing the entire web page and reloading the new web elements at times it can be ajax calls as well thus a time lag can be seen when reloading the web pages and reflecting the web elements the users are often found navigating through web pages back and forth thus thus you can use various methods provided by the web driver that helps the user to simulate the real time scenarios by navigating between the web pages with reference to web browser history so why do you need weights in selenium Most of the web applications are developed using Ajax and JavaScript calls. When a page is loaded by a browser, the elements which we want to interact with may load at different time interval. With this, it not only becomes difficult to identify the element, but also if the element is not located, it will throw a element not visible exception. But by using weights, you can resolve this. so basically there are three types of weights one is implicit explicit and fluent so an implicit weight it will tell the web driver to wait for a certain amount of time before it throws a no such element exception thus default setting is set to 0 once you set the time the web driver will wait for a particular time interval before throwing an exception so in this case even if the element is not located it will wait for a particular amount of time if you have specified 30 seconds of implicit wait no matter what even if the element is not found it will wait for 30 seconds and then it will throw the exception 
till 30 seconds, it will keep on waiting on this particular page. The next one is explicit weights. It is a concept of the dynamic weight which waits dynamically for specific conditions. It can be implemented with the help of a web driver weight class. I will demonstrate that for you. And to understand this, you should know the requirement why we use weight programs in Selenium. And I'll give you a couple of examples as well. And one such condition is, so suppose say I have a web page which has some login information and it's a login form. And after login, it takes a lot of time to load the account page or home page. This page is dynamic, which means sometimes it takes one second to load or sometimes it might even take 30 seconds or more. In such cases, explicit wait will help us to wait until a specific page is not present. So now let's demonstrate and understand what are these. So I have created a class. Again, I have specified all the uh, path and everything. Then also I have created the object of a driver. And I'm deleting all the cookies just because uh, I want to make sure nothing is up and running. And every other test cases has to be clear. And I have specified a page load timeout for 40 seconds, which means it will wait for 40 seconds and then the page will get timed out. And here is the implicit wait, which means if I have given 30 seconds, it will wait for 30 seconds no matter what. Even if you have executed the test case and if you have found the element also, it will wait. If there is no element present also, it will wait. Okay. And next you have the uh, URL of the website that is facebook.com. Uh, so I am finding the first name and the last name. So I am finding the element using the name as first name and the last name. Okay. So in case of this, I'm using a send keys method and specifying the driver instance. Here you can see that this is a function call because I'm creating a function definition here. So this is a function call, a method called send keys, which has an attribute called driver first. First name, this is the one specifying the value 10. This is the time value. And then I'm specifying the name should be my name. Again, for last name, the driver, you can see where all it is being used. Last name, this is the one, my last name. I'm just specifying it and the timeout value. Suppose say I have forgot the account. In this case, I will use this particular link text and it has to navigate me through this particular uh, account. And in this example, I'm basically using for sign up credentials and located them using these locators. Here I have created a utility or one generic function that is the send keys for all the elements to provide. And that is what I have used my own send keys method. And here I'm giving the expected condition as well when I'm and then I'm using one more additional uh, method of my own, which will use a driver, the forgot account element and the timeout. Here there is no value, so I need not specify any value. So now I'm defining my own function that is send keys. So web driver driver one will be the new keyword that I'm giving new driver web element element. So driver will be this. Element will be my first name. Int timeout will take the 10 seconds. String value will be my name. So as I have mentioned before, for an explicit wait, you need to create a web driver wait class. So I will use this driver dot timeout until expected conditions visibility of element. So unless and until there is a visibility of the element that I am going to find in my send keys, it has to wait. Which means the explicit wait is for dynamic use. And you can use it for a particular element. And again, you can give the expected condition. It has to wait for a particular amount of time. Then I'm giving element of send keys as value. So here is the value which will. So this value will comprise of two things. This is 
the my name and my last name because it has the same send keys method. So this send keys method will invoke both these send keys. So next I have a click on again a new web driver element and a timeout and this is repeat and this has an expected condition until the element is clickable. There it was visibility here it is clickable because it has to be clicked it cannot be visible because I am performing the action called click here. So here I'm mentioning element dot click because it has to click this. So when you execute the program, let's see what happens. So it's navigating to the facebook.com and then it will enter the first name and the last name. You can see that. And it also hit on the button forgotten account right so but it's waiting it's not get close because i have asked it to wait for a particular amount of time no matter what okay so that's how you can use both implicit and explicit way together in a problem and this is how it actually works and this is all about the weights in selenium and here are my final key takeaways so selenium is a testing tool for automation testing of web application it offers wide support to various programming languages, operating systems and browsers and locators are used to find a web element and perform actions as you have already seen and weights are used to wait for a particular page to load until the action completes or if there is no any action then it will throw an exception. So this was all about the Selenium tutorial. If you have any queries, you can mention in the comment section below and we will reply to you at the earliest. I hope you found this session interesting. Thank you and have a nice day.